All right, in our last several videos, we have been going through PUA limitations with different life insurance companies. In this video, we are going to do the exact same thing, but with one of my personal favorite companies being good old Guardian Life Insurance. So let's take a look here. When we take a look at Guardian as a life insurance company, they are one of your four major mutual companies. Now, as we covered in one of our prior videos, their PUA limitations allow for 10X the base premium to be illustrated in annual PUA payments provided a one-year term rider is attached. However, in the first year, they will allow policyholders to pay up to 50 times the base premium in PUAs. Does this always make sense from a pure cash value maximization standpoint? Not all the time, because it does require that I have a very, very high death benefit, high term rider in order to accommodate the MEC limit needed to be able to put a large PUA payment in. So sometimes it makes sense to perhaps not 50X, maybe I'm 10Xing from the get-go. Maybe I pay 20X in the first year and then scale back. My point is when we look at different types of ways to design a policy, we like to look at those different options so I can see everything up front. And it's okay to look at as many options as you would like, because of course, this is your money going into a policy. So what we're gonna look at here, we're gonna have some fun with Guardian. We are going to look at an example, and this is gonna be similar to what I would walk someone through. So if you're working with us and trying to figure out how much do I wanna pay in? How long do I wanna pay in? Can I see this 50X limitation? This is meant to kind of walk you through the process that I would take you through if you were working with our company to start with. Um, and you didn't have an idea as far as how much you'd like to pay in. A lot of times you work with people and they say, here's a, I've got a good sense of what I, what, I, what I would like to pay in. Can I see different options? So what we're going to look at here with Guardian is as follows. We're going to look at an age 40 male. And we will begin with 50K per year for 10 years. And what I want to show there or point out when we look at that example is a limitation. If you're taking a Guardian product, funding really at the max, 10X the base premium for 10 years or less, you can really make that product look good on a guaranteed and non-guaranteed basis. If you want a max fund, meaning 10X your base premium for a longer period of time than 10 years, what that often requires is that we go with a larger term rider, it frequently forces a higher base premium than what we'd like and just gradually deteriorates, call it the performance, from what it would look like if I'm funding for a shorter period of time. Now, what a lot of people like the idea of is max funding a policy for five years or for 10 years and then taking their foot off the gas and paying a lower amount in. A lot of people with lump sums of money that say, hey, I love the benefits of cash value life insurance. Let me get a large sum of money into a product quickly and then just stop or pay a reduced amount. This is an attractive product along with that PUA flexibility. Like that's the big one being one of the major mutuals, big one in my opinion, one of the major mutuals, meaning the performance is there. We've seen it and they allow that PUA flexibility. You can just log on to your mobile app, online portal and pour funds in whenever you want. Now, we're gonna look at, so that's a lot of additional info. We're gonna look at that 50K for 10 years. Then we're going to look at 50K per year for five years. I'm gonna keep the same base premium here. I'm just gonna show you how you can slightly scale up performance in that case. In that particular example, we are going to pull the MEC limit down to exactly 50K. So we're gonna have a policy where we are redlining this bad boy and juicing the cash value. But then what will be interesting, take note that I mentioned a 50K MEC limit there, is we're gonna look at a policy with 50K a year for five years, with the exception of the first year, where it'll be a total of $250,000, because we're going to take advantage of the 50X rule. And we'll show you exactly how we do that and prevent the MEC from occurring. So let's get on into it and have some fun. So let's assume that you're a 40 year old individual, you're interested in a high cash value life insurance policy, we've discussed the different companies and you like Guardian as a company. So Guardian, you're leaning towards them. We look at a number of products as we usually do. We've got a 15 pay whole life product as one option here. Let's begin with a breakdown as to where your money is going. So. We've got 50K per year going into a policy. Here's a full illustration. 
50K a year, 10 years. If I'm you, the question I would have is this, that 50,000, where is it going? Because my dollars can be directed toward the insurance premium or toward my PUA rider, which I see right here, the paid up additions rider. Now, this policy is very close to maxed out, but not quite. We could actually set that base premium at $4,500 and change. So we could actually divide the total payment by 11, if we really want to squeeze everything here, um, which typically we, we do, and we like to show that, uh, but some people prefer round numbers. And when you look at the difference, it's like, all right, there's not much difference there. But for full transparency, we could squeeze that further. But here's what I want to hit on. That $5,000 base premium gets you a whole life death benefit of $148,000. As a company, Guardian will provide or will allow a policyholder to set the total death benefit when we're using a one-year term rider no greater than 10 times the base face amount. And that's specifically to their one-year term rider. They do have another term rider available, which you can attach to inc increase your death benefit, which we'll hit on later. But that 1.45, what this means here is when we're using this one-year term rider, which we see right here, this target additional benefit, 1.30, that's your one-year term rider. What happens is as you pay money into the policy, we do it for cash value, but your whole life death benefit goes up and your term rider comes down. And you can actually see that right here, comes down and we timed it in this example to fully expire by year 10. Now, that total death benefit in this example could not be any greater than 1.48, 1.48 million, 10X the whole life death benefit, which the whole life death benefit is generated from the $5,000 base premium. If we lower this, to lower this, which will lower the total death benefit we could acquire, which may limit the ability to fund 50K per year for 10 years. Very interesting, interesting stuff, right? We'll continue on here. You'll see where I'm going. In this example, we've got 50K per year going in, break even point, clean year five based on the present dividend interest rate. First year, $42,000, just about 42 in cash value, and I've paid in 50. So about an $8,000 hit. What's not showing up in cash value? The base premium, the term rider cost, and then also PUA fees that are associated with the policy. So year five is the break even. The net cash value assumes the base premium expands, term costs, PUA fees, everything, hence the word net cash value. I like how, um, some companies do that. It does reflect the total value at the end of the day. Year 10, 572. What I want to hit on here though is year five. So this policy is a MEC limit that's overinflated. It's between 70 and $80,000. And the reason we did that in this example is we're funding for 10 years. We have this term rider attached. If we reduce the term rider, let's say so it expires after seven years, when there's no more term, remember Guardian's limitation without the one-year term rider? Instead of 10X, we can pay an additional 3X in PUAs. 5,000 times three is 15,000. 5,000 in base plus 15 in PUA would give us a total of 20,000. So what that means is if we reduce the MEC limit by reducing the term rider, we would limit ourselves as to how much we could pay into the policy if we still wanted to 10X. So in this example, he wanted to 10X for 10 years or assume you wanted to 10X for 10 years and then stop. Now, let's assume you have the question, well, can I improve my upfront cash value? Because I'm interested in just seeing more equity up front. Am I gonna use it all? Probably not, but I would like to see more cash value. Is that possible? The answer is yes. So with Guardian, if we take a look at the same policy here, so same exact product here, everything's the same with the exception of one thing. Look at your total death benefit in the far right. 
Last example was 145. In this example, it's 1,050,000. That number for a 40-year-old male with this product that has a guaranteed rate of 3% gives him almost exactly a $50,000 MEC limit. Now in this example, we're looking at 50K for five years only and then stopping. We could easily get it in for six years, almost seven. And why I say that, look at your term rider here. How much term do you have left at the end of year five? And how much is it shrinking by each year? You can get almost, it'll be another $90,000 $90, and change over the next two years into the policy with this present MEC limit. Once the term expires, then we're not so much looking at the MEC limit, but we're looking at guardian's limit as far as not being able to 10X the base premium each year. But look at this, not a huge difference, but we're able to cross 42,000 right off the bat. If we lower that base premium as low as we could go, you'll see that closer to 42,300 42, to 42,400, and we can gradually just inch things up, which we're trying to improve the overall value of the product, which is the kind of stuff we like to look at here. A lot of people we work with are interested in that. Yes, some view it as a minor detail. Um, many of my peers uh, have expressed that, people in the industry, it's a minor detail. It's only a couple hundred bucks or a couple thousand bucks to individuals, those that are paying in 10,000 per year and those that are paying in several hundred thousand per year, they look at that. So it's important to them. Therefore, we want to address that appropriately. Factor in every dollar you can. So five years, Nothing thereafter. Okay, so let's take a look here at these two examples side by side. We will begin with the first example. What do we notice here? This is the first example we looked at. There's your death benefit, 1.450. There's your payments, so you get your base pre premium. One year term rider, which is gradually decreasing over time. There's your cash value, positive year five, beautiful. There's your minimum premium. So we have a 1090 split here, funding for 10 years. You say, can I see an option with five years? Or perhaps I recommend it as far as not saying you should do this, but recommend it as seeing this option. Let's take a look. So now, same policy here. Well, same design with a 5K base premium. You're the same person, 40 year old male, health rating, all that good stuff. The difference is a lesser term rider. So what do you notice here with the difference in value? By year five, you've got a little over $1,000 more. Now, of course, the example on the left will have more from this point forward. And the reason why is because we've got more term attached so we can fund it for longer. So this is where we'll have a discussion point or we'll have a discussion around this. Maybe it's a seven year fund, but this is the kind of stuff we'll frequently discuss with people if they're interested in this particular company, Guardian, and funding for a short period of time and maybe paying the premium thereafter. But this kind of stuff comes up. So now that we've got this policy here, what's significant about the next example or the middle example? That gave you a MEC limit of $50,000. Okay. So now let's look at this 50X. If you've got a $5,000 base premium, if we could 100 exit, that'd be 500,000. We're gonna look at a total of $250,000 going into a policy and a non-MEC. The thing is, we can't get, if we keep the base premium at $5,000, we cannot get the death benefit with a basic one year term rider higher than 1.48 million because it's 10 xing that certain death benefit there or that the whole life death benefit. So we did it and I'll show you how as well. <laughs> so here we go. This is a non-MEC by the way. How do we prevent the MEC, a MEC from occurring? What has a direct relationship to, a model, to the MEC limit on a policy? An individual's age and total amount of life insurance on a policy. The guaranteed rate does too, but here, you will notice a big difference in the death benefit. However, base premium is the same, $5,000. $250,000 in the policy right out of the gates, 225, break even, year four. Paid in 400,000, you have 400,000 in cash value. 
Now we're going to go to the illustration, but you can see it here because we pulled all the data from the illustration and put it on Excel like we always do. One year term rider, level term rider. So Guardian offers two riders, um, two term riders that is. You've got your one year term rider. This is what gives you the ability to 10x your base premium. With that, without that, you cannot do it. And then you've got a level term rider. If you went only with a level term rider, which is just a level death benefit until it, until it expires after 10 years or we cut it off. If we did not have a one year term rider is what I meant to say, you'll be limited to 3x the base premium in PUAs. If you have both, you can still 10x because this is attached, the one year term rider. All these riders and such, right? All the technical details. But we see a lot of cash value up front. We stuffed this thing right out of the gates. And this is an example for a 40 year old where it made sense. Now, I would look at some different designs here, just knowing because I did look at different designs. We've played around with this a number of times. Lowering that death benefit a little bit. And if we paid in 150 in the first year, then maybe 75 per year thereafter with a $7,500 base premium, getting the same dollar amount in, but over a different period of time could be optimal as we study different examples, again, guaranteed and non-guaranteed. But here's an example of different options. How do I optimize? We've got a 10 year option. Can I make it a little bit better by cutting the funding down to five years? Hey, I've got a lump sum. What if I want to throw a lump sum into the policy right, off, right out of the gates? What will that look like? And it looks pretty darn good when I look at it. We could even go another year here. All right, so how much do we have into the policy here? You've got a total of 450K. Should have done this. Could do it real quick. Eh, I'll make this video an hour if I keep showing different scenarios. If you said, hey, I want to get half a million in. What happens if I pay another 50 in this year? I need just a touch more term. We could do it. A touch more term to do this, just based on the rate that's decreasing. You could get the same 500 in over six years in this example. And now you've got the same dollar amount in and really analyzing if it makes sense to do it over 10 years or condensing it over six years in this example. Or maybe we go with the higher base premium and you do something like 100K per year for five years which would look good because you're, you're funding up to the MEC limit each year. Point is, a lot of different ways to design it, but can we pay more than 10x the base premium without a MEC, a modified endowment contract occurring? The answer is 100% yes, right? And this is, this is an example. Let's make sure we look at the illustration so we can see a breakdown here. Base premium, level term rider, so level death benefit, it is a, this guy 365, that does not change. This does, it's a renewable term riders, so the premium increases, we chop it off after year seven. Doesn't matter because it gives us more net cash value. And that's what I like to look at. And then PUAs, look at those large PUA deposits. So they do allow up to 50X in the first year. And this is the data we just looked at on the Excel comparison sheet. One more example, let's wrap up with this guy. So. We've got a sample entitled high net worth, same 40 year old individual, but funding for a long period of time with a large, large lump sum. So we've got a $25,000 base premium, breakdown as to where the money's going. Then you've got your renewable term rider, almost 4,000 per year. There's your PUA payments. So huge lump sum. Guardian does allow a maximum of 50X the base premium or 10 million, anything higher than that is subject to um, approval from home office. So it's the lesser of the two. So if you're looking at a $5 million total lump sum, um, right, off, right out of the gates, you would need a minimum base premium of $200,000. If you're looking at 10 million or a high amount, that base would need to be higher. But my point is we've got our base premium. We can go a maximum of 50X that or 10 million, the lesser of the two. So I can't have a $2,000 base premium and throw 10 million in right out of the gates. I would need to get it approved first. That'd be pretty cool though. So here we go. This is funding for 30 years in this example. And this is interesting because we're gonna show different variations or different splits as the years pass all with the same policy. So we've got a policy with 50X initially, 25K base premium, 50Xing it. 
in PUA payments. 1350, look at that. 1.2 million in cash value, that's a hit. I would look at that, a lot of people look at that closely, mainly a result of the PUA fees. You could look at another product here with Guardian. This is actually their L95, because it allows me to keep a $25,000 base premium, the L15 did not. And I wanted to fund it up until age 65. But then what do we have? 50X in year one, 10X a year thereafter, until when? Till the term burns out. Also what I wanna hit on, look at this. What happens to year 11? The level term rider falls off. It is a 10 year term rider with Guardian. Then the one year term rider, if we keep max funding it year in and year out, burns out in this example year 12. We could look at a different product to stretch it a little bit longer here. And then after that, the maximum we can illustrate is 3X the base premium PUA payments. So here we go, 25K base premium times three, another 75K, add the two together, gives you 100. There's your funding and there's your value. All based on the present dividend interest rate, we would of course want to look at the guarantees. We could look at the index rider as well. A lot of times we'll look at all of those different assumptions, um, but just gives you a nice sample of what the product looks like as the years pass. Hope you enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun with this one, all of them really. Um, if you did enjoy this video, feel free to reach out with any questions, leave any comments or questions below. I do monitor those. And if you did enjoy the video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more. And as always, I hope this helps. Thanks so much. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.